Two teams, two days, $1,000. Sounds like a tagline for a show, right? Well, it is. That's the tagline for TLC's early 2000s hit show, Trading Spaces. It's a home renovation and decorating show. And the premise was that two sets of neighbors would be given the task of renovating a room in the other neighbor's home. They got two days and $1,000, who would have guessed? And also the help of a professional designer. And you'd probably think, a professional designer? Well, they must have loved the renovations. I bet they did a really good job. I'm sure they didn't completely ruin the homes they worked on, resulting in thousands of dollars in damages and emotional trauma. Unfortunately, you would be wrong. Let's talk about it. I am joined once again by my unnamed guest. Remember me? It's been a while. Bible man, I think. Yeah, it was. I can't, um... Did people like you? It was mixed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right, honestly. Hey, I had good input, though. I did. I had good input. I don't know if people fully get what what you are. <laughs> That's fine. You don't care? I'm good. Now, what are we watching? Trading Space. You've been here literally the whole time. You heard what I said. <laughs> so Trading Spaces featured some of the most distasteful and potentially home ruining renovations on TV outside of like maybe a prank show. So this is not like a punked type of thing. It is not. No, not even a little bit. Oh man, I'm excited now. Something that would happen a lot is one of the sets of neighbors would actually really like what the other neighbors did to their home. They'd be really excited about the renovation. Oh man, very good. You guys nailed it. And then the other neighbors were not so much. Definitely the thing about the bed has got to go. No, I don't like that. So this woman really hates what was done to her bedroom. But the neighbor husband, who's partially responsible for the renovation, comes in and he's being really weird. He's giving off vibes like he screwed it up on purpose. Hi, Casey. Hi, Bob. How are you? <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> you, said that. you might uh, not like the partitions, but we liked them. I'm sure you do. You want to help me take him down? <laughs> no. <laughs> I get the feeling she wronged him in some way in the past. He's definitely holding a grudge about something. She insulted his Dave Matthews Band CD collection <laughs> and he never forgave her. So that was a little awkward, right? But by far the most infamous clip from this entire show's history is this one right here. For a little bit of context, every couple gives the designers an idea of what they like, things that they're into, but more importantly, they give them a list of things that they do not want to happen. And this couple had two very clear no's. One of them is they do not like brown. Think about how much Garfield hates Mondays. Double that, that's how much this couple did not like brown. And the second absolute no that they had was do not touch the fireplace. They had this beautiful brick fireplace. Well, they thought it was a beautiful brick fireplace and they did not want anything done to it. Okay, they're very clear about that. Pam and John were clear in their wish to have their fireplace untouched. Let's see what happens. Open your eyes and see your new family room. Wow. <laughs> Well, it's different. The big question is, what do you think about the fireplace? You guys are going to be fixing that in a little bit. Oh my God, what? Well, I mean, what do you expect? You quite literally did exactly what they told you not to do. Hmm. I'm going to have to leave the room now. You're that yeah. disappointed. Well, I'm going to have to leave. Yeah, that's... Boy, she's not happy. No, well, you don't say. <laughs> this is a personal attack. You know, if they didn't want the walls to be brown or for us to touch the fireplace, they really should have said something. Y you say that as a joke, but I will literally get to that. Uh, oh, you guys are here. Yeah, it looks really good. And and your room is everything is reversible. Oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> they, oh, that's what that. They, kind of they had an adverse reaction. Yeah. Well, yeah. we were afraid of that. So why didn't you say it? Nothing is touching that whatsoever. Do you like yours? Yes. Yeah, it yeah, looks yes. great. Do you like yours? Yeah? You like that we didn't f yours up? Wouldn't it be nice to not have your house be f***ed up? Oh, it must be nice. Real quick, I want to show a clip from the BBC show that this one was based off of originally. It was called Changing Rooms. And in this instance, there was a lady who had a priceless collection of teapots, but we will put a price on it. It's uh, many thousands of dollars. A large, expensive collection that also held sentimental value. Don't do this. I... <laughs> so the homeowner said she wanted a sturdy corner cabinet to display the teapots. Why'd you in? say sturdy? Why would you say that word? Just, just watch. Only seconds after finishing in Linda's room, disaster struck. The added weight of all those books proved too much for the freestanding shelves. Oh no. That is all our teapots. Oh no. 
I don't know, Andy. I think we just have to put our hands up on this one. <laughs> you wanted a corner cabinet. I gave you a nice hanging modern shelf. Oh no, she tried to make it seem like they did something wrong? Well, you wanted a corner cabinet. And I gave you a nice modern piece of shit shell. So you're admitting you didn't give us what we wanted. I also destroyed your priceless teapot collection, okay? Well, no, there is a price. It's many thousands of dollars. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think about the show so far? It's a ride, for sure. By the way, can I... Is it fine if I do a little redecorating of my own? Just something little, something small? Uh, yeah, just don't touch, don't touch Jaden or Corbin's things there. Those need to stay. Don't worry about it. It'll be just little, a little thing. What are you even doing? Are you serious right now? Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Take a minute to Google your name, okay? Go ahead, I'll, I'll wait for you. For real, dude? Excuse me. While you're doing that, think about how creepy and violating it would be for a bunch of your personal information to pop up on the other end of that search. Okay, did you do it? Were you disgusted by what you found? Same. Data brokers sell all of that personal information of yours, a lot of the time to people who don't have your best interest in mind, and they're making a fortune, that's where Aura comes in. Aura can identify data brokers that have your info and submit opt-out requests for you, meaning that those sites legally have to remove your information from them. I spent a lot of time in the past trying to manually do this by myself. They make it so cumbersome, so confusing. Those sites do not want you to submit those requests. But Aura is awesome because now you can just sit back and laugh at those data brokers. Get a real job. Aura also offers different services like a VPN, credit card monitoring, password monitoring, antivirus protection, etc., etc. And you can get all that stuff through different providers, but having it all in one place can save you a pretty penny. Wow, look at that penny. So you can leave all that scary and or boring stuff to Aura, and then you can just spend less time worrying about your data and information being secure, and more time vacuuming. It's been a really long time since you vacuumed. You really should be doing that more. If you're interested, you can go to aura.com slash Scott Kramer to start your two week free trial. And that is also linked in the description below. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you guys for clicking on Scott's links when he has them. Helps him out a ton. And that's it. We can take this down now. We are done with it. Okay, don't ever do that again. In the middle of our conversation, what are you doing? Dude, please, you do that in almost every single video. Yeah, but I try to be tasteful. That was just... Rude. Speaking of rude, if you take a look at all of the most awful rooms on trading spaces and you peer deep into the eyes of the saddest homeowners, there will almost always be one single common denominator, and that is Hildy Santo Tomas. Hildy was one of the designers on the show, and it's almost like she was on a mission to ruin as many homes as she possibly could. She doesn't appear to know what actually makes for good functional design, or even visibly appealing design for that matter. She just wanted to shock people. People, which I guess is good for reality TV, but you're dealing with actual people in their actual homes and that's not, it's shocking them is not a good thing to do. Open your eyes and see what it looks like. Oh my God. Oh, it, well, it's pink. That's the first thing you noticed was yeah. the ceiling. Yeah. You the wall lighting. is a little bit funky. I'm not sure about the straw action here. I'm glad you could tell it was straw because we is straw. weren't sure you'd even know for sure what it was. It's straw. It's straw. It's straw. You know, I'm going to be cleaning up straw for the rest of my life. How do you justify this? Well, the vision was to glue an absolute barnyard's worth of hay on every square inch of the walls. And I think they executed that to perfection, do you not? Well, I'm not arguing that they did it. I'm asking why the f she thought that it would be a good idea. The worst part about this one is that the neighbors who helped glue the hay all over the walls, they come in and they are really happy with what the renovation on their house looked like. I love my kitchen, you guys! I cried! Yeah. I cried! Yeah. This is what's gonna happen. I know. Yeah. It almost feels like one of those game shows where you can choose to split the money with someone or steal it. One person sabotages the other and then they feel really bad about it once they realize that the other person didn't screw them over. They have a baby in a toddler. Well, but, what do you mean? Well, they might pick it off. Well, they need to be told not to, I mean. <laughs> Spoken like a person who doesn't have kids. Yeah, by the way, I saw Corbin waving a razor around when I came in. Oh yeah, he loves that thing. It gets even worse when you realize that the family took 17 hours of their own time to take all of this down. Again, for the safety of the children in the house, this had to be done. It took five people 17 hours to remove all the glue from the wall. The baby the next day was gagging on the hay. We loaded the bookshelf up with books, and the next day it was pulling out of the wall. What if that fell on the kids? I can't even imagine trying to unglue hay from your walls. That doesn't even seem like, that feels like something you have to knock the walls down to fix. How did the network let this fly? 
How did they ever let Hildy touch people's homes at all? When somebody says, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, really? Watch me. Hildy, they're not challenging you. They're trying to protect themselves from a lawsuit. The straw was a great idea. A lot of things must be put into the correct perspective. It really was very cool. It was just, they didn't like it. So is she delusional or is she just taking the piss? See, I don't want to give her that credit. I don't think she's clever enough to be doing this as some kind of like meta joke. She really thinks she did something. I think so, dude. She had so many of these ugly rooms. I like to be different. I like to be original. It's not about shock value. It's about pushing the envelope. That's not about shock value. It's a massive, disgusting self-portrait. It's not even a picture of one of the homeowners. It's of you. It is funny that you bring that up because I actually, I have a gift to give you. You didn't. Yeah, it's just a gift for your house. Here you go. This is shocking. It's not. Don't say that. It pushes the envelope. It's going in the trash. Well, don't do that. Bathroom. I'll allow it. Some of Hildy's other greatest hits include, but are not limited to, filling an entire room with sand and making the walls look like a frickin' circus tent. She nailed thousands of flowers all over this bathroom wall. I don't know what she was thinking with this horror-themed kitchen with blood and like a crime scene all over the walls. I'm sure Don the Vampire would really appreciate living there though. And then another instance where a couple specifically wanted bright colors in their rooms and she decided to go with black and white instead. What a f you to the couple. What? That's just so, that, no, oh my God. This is a basement that was designed by Hilde Santo Tomas. She initially uh, found this incredible fabric that's on these big pillows on the sofa, and she mimicked this fabric onto the walls. Open your eyes and see your new room. What the f Hell to the no. What do the kids say? She woke up and chose violence? I don't even think she knows she woke up. I think she still thinks she's dreaming. This is the type of behavior you could only get away with in a dream. Yeah, she doesn't even realize she's ruining people's homes. She thinks it's just a silly little playground in her head. <laughs> oh God, Hildy, wake up! Even the other hosts on the show didn't seem to like Hildy and realized that what she was doing was really messed up. Ty Pennington at one point made a comment about helping a family undo one of the rooms that she put together. I did help a family remove about 3,000 wine labels off a wall just because I felt bad. And in that same interview, you could hear another host insinuate that Hildy was a liability for the show. Do any of the fabulous designers on the show make you more nervous than others <laughs> doing those fast paced renovations? <laughs> Who are you most frightened of? I think she's, I, I, I don't know. I think not here. The show was off the air for a while. And then when they brought it back, they had everybody do kind of these press tours. And there was a team interview where everybody had to dance around the fact that she's just not good at her job. Hildy's coming. Yeah. She's coming for you. She, she does doesn't give many Fs. And that does not stand for feathers. So they kept her around because it was making for good reality TV and they didn't care that they were actually hurting real people. Yeah, that about sums it up, I think. Cool, cool, cool. A very on brand for TLC. <laughs> One more thing to touch on is Paige. She's the host of the show. She went on little press tours throughout the years to promote it. And she had such a weird way of talking about the terrible rooms that they would design. You just talk them through it, listen to what they have to say, and then go, bye, Felicia. <laughs> What the f***? You ruined people's houses and that's how you were- What an insane mindset to have. She said you listen to their grievances and then tell them, Bye, Felicia. Is she Satan? Oops, we screwed it all up. See ya! She also doubled down at one point and said that, like, it, she doesn't even think it's their responsibility to give the homeowners a good space. You're basically there to please the client, right? We are. Mm -hmm. but well, we are, I but... have a different oh, feeling boy. about that. <laughs> you really are taking a risk when you go on the on trading spaces. You are trading with your neighbors and you have no say. They They're responsible so they know for putting in, in that time and, mm -hmm. and money to change something they don't like. Our network TV show might come in and give you a cool new living room, or we could completely destroy your home and place a massive financial burden on you. It's the risk you take, baby. And back to the whole thing of them doing the complete opposite of what people asked for. There was another one where they had a room that was all like Asian inspired, which you guessed it, the couple asked specifically to not have Asian inspired design. Why are you doing the opposite of of what people are asking you to do. This isn't some kind of modern art experiment. It's somebody's home that they have to live in. Paige's favorite thing to say was that these messed up rooms were so rare. I'm sure you hear this all the time. I love it when they hate it. And I think one of the reasons that they love it so much is because it's so rare. We remember those episodes because they were so rare. I think the reason why people remember those shows so much is because they're so rare. And if that's the case, I do not accept her insistence that people 
knew what they were getting into. It's a complete contradiction. It doesn't even make sense, logically. Our show is overwhelmingly awesome and people love the great rooms that we always design. That's all we ever do, awesome stuff that people love. But also, when we completely ruin your home, you should have seen it coming. You doofus, how did you not know we were gonna do this? You can't have it both ways. And this is admittedly just a personal thing. I do not like how she grabs onto people's arms so tightly during all of the reveals. It's like she's trying to keep them from escaping. <laughs> Is there anything that you can see in the room to fix certain elements of it to make it better for the two of you. His wife loudly crying in the other room while Paige is restraining him is just such a funny visual. <laughs> right, it makes me think of like a... What the hell? Did I... Just sorry, I was grabbing a Tahitian treat from the fridge. Oh, thank God. I thought I was hallucinating for a minute there. Nah, you're good, man. Well, anyway, that's it. I just wanted to goof around for a little bit and talk about this show. My next video coming up is a huge time-consuming beast, so just something silly in the meantime. I'm glad I could enjoy this time with you. I always enjoy spending time with you, man. We should do it again sometime. Yeah, I'll see if I can make some room in my schedule. Anywho, thanks for watching. Extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier on there. You guys, I... Let me renovate your homes. Let me do it, you cowards. Struggleshop.com if you want to get yourself some merch. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and watch another video on the channel. There's a ton of good ones. I like hanging out with you. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye. Bye. Have you ever watched uh, My Lottery Dream Home with David Bromstead? Oh yeah. Have you noticed how David doesn't seem to know anything about real estate or any of the houses that they're walking through? Have you noticed how horny he always is? <laughs> he really is, isn't he? So here's the shower. I bet you could fit the whole neighborhood in there, huh? Oh, you guys are so naughty. I just, I love it.